Hello everyone. Today we can learn about electroanalytical techniques. Some of you might heard about this term or familiar with this. If not, don't worry. We can learn together. Electroanalytical techniques, as the name indicates, it's the analytical technique utilizing the electrochemical properties. Why we need to use these techniques? We can particularly study a specific oxidation state of the material and also we will get a lot of information like stoichiometry, equilibrium, kinetics, mass transfer, etc. Moreover, the instruments in electroanalytical techniques are less expensive, small and portable devices. There are many electroanalytical techniques. And these electroanalytical techniques can be classified according to their application or the usage. These techniques can be classified into two based on their application that is interfacial technique and bulk technique. Interfacial techniques measures the reaction occur on the electrode interface whereas the bulk techniques measures the process or properties in the whole solution or the bulk solution. Only one technique comes under the bulk technique that is conductometry which measures the conductivity of the ions in the solution. Interfacial techniques can be further classified into two based on the current flow that is static technique and dynamic techniques. In the static techniques there is no current flow in it whereas the dynamic techniques there is current flow in it. Static techniques does not have redox reaction or whereas in the dynamic techniques we generate the redox reaction. Example of static techniques is potentiometry. In the dynamic case we can further classify them as two. Control potential technique and constant current techniques. In the constant current techniques there is a constant current flow in the system. Example of this case are coulometry and electrogravimetry. In the controlled potential technique, which is one of the most interesting technique in the electroanalytical technique. As the name indicates, control the potential in the reaction and measures the current. Example of these techniques are amperometry and voltmetry. In the case of coulometry and electrogravimetry, both cases are applicable. That is constant current and controlled potential cases are applicable. Thus, the electrochemical techniques which can detect the interfacial reactions are voltmetry, amperometry and potentiometry. In this video, we will talk about only on voltmetry. Before going into this video, welcome all of you to the Psychopal official YouTube channel. If you like the video, please like, subscribe our channel. Coming to the voltmetry, we will get information about the analyte from the current potential measurement. The analytical data from a voltmetric experiment comes in the form of a voltmogram. Voltmogram which plot the current produced by the analyte versus the potential of the working electrode. As the voltage changes, the current flowing through the cell is measured and this current is directly related to the reaction occurring at the working electrode. In the voltmetry, a voltage is applied to the working electrode and then the voltage is scanned linearly or stepwise or in a triangular waveform between the two limits typically called the oxidation and reduction potential. Based on this, Voltmetry can be classified into three that is potential step voltmetry, linear sweep voltmetry and the third one is cyclic voltmetry. First we can check about the potential step voltmetry. In this measurement the applied voltage is instantaneously jump from one value V1 to another value V2. The initial voltage is V1 and the final voltage is V2. That is the potential sweep in, in this case is a step like manner which resulted the name potential step voltmetry. As the voltage changes 
the current flowing through the cell is measured and this current is directly related to the rate of the reaction occurring at the working electrode which resulted the voltammogram and here it is in which the current is in the y axis and the voltage is in the x axis next we can go to linear sweep voltammetry here the voltage is sweep linearly between two limits typically the oxidation and reduction potential in lsd the range of potential is fixed and the scanning start from lower limit of voltage v1 for example v1 to an upper limit of v2 for example the scanning starting from v1 to the upper limit v2 scanning start from v1 to v2 in a linear manner the resultant voltammogram is shown here as we apply voltage from v1 the current starts to increase and reaches a maximum point which is called the peak position peak current and then the current start to decrease this voltage scan rate is calculated from the slope of this line the characteristics of the lsv recorded depends on number of factors such as the rate of electron transfer reactions and the chemical reactivity of the electroactive species and the voltage scan rate and the next one is the next one is cyclic voltammetry cv cv is used to study the redox behavior of the material in this case the voltage is swept in a triangular waveform between two limits typically called the oxidation and redox potential at a fixed rate when the voltage reaches v2 from v1 the scan is reversed and the voltage is swept back to v1 that is if the v1 is swept in both direction from v1 to v2 and then v2 to v1 the potential is cycled and that's why the name cyclic voltammetry here is an example of cv plot for a reversible single electrode transfer reactions and the solution contains only a single electrochemical reactant the forward sweep produces an identical response to that seen for the lsv case the current flow is from the electrode to the solution when the scan is reversed move back through the equilibrium position the current flow is now from the solution species back to the electrode so occur in the opposite sense to the forward sweep forward sweep and this is the backward sweep otherwise the behavior can be explained in an identical manner from the voltammogram various electrochemical properties can be extracted such as half wave potential peak current and diffusion coefficient etc next we can have a look on the advantages of this cyclic voltammetry first one is it is possible to know whether the chemical reaction of the reactant is reversible or irreversible second one is the potential at which an oxidation or reduction reaction occurs can be determined third one is quantitative analysis is also possible for substance whose concentration is not known fourth one is it is possible to measure by changing test conditions such as scan rate temperature and concentration of the reactant if you think the video is useful please like share comment and subscribe our channel thank you for watching